Here's the key to the three-point test cross for uploading. So let's get going. <laughs> of course, two pure breeding strains. F1 is test cross, the test cross offspring phenotype, and number of observed. We need to set them into two different classes, the largest class and the smallest class. What does the smallest class denote? Double crossover, largest class, parental. Is there just one phenotype for each or two? Always two, okay? So the highest number, it's gotta be parental. The other highest number, it's got to be the other parental of the class. What about the smallest? Yep, there's a little number, there's a little number, plus, 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 six. RSW is four. That's the double crossover class. Again, this notation is just showing, showing mutant with a letter and wild type just as a plus. If it's confusing and hard to follow that, you can always add the S, right? That's really S plus and W plus, and this is R plus. Okay, and this is R wild type, S wild type, W, <laughs> w wild type. Okay, that will help you. That was all it was for this one. Now we compare the DCO to the parental, right? Remember, that was the DCO. This was the parental class. So which ones are the oddballs? Two should be the same, one should be different. Hmm, I see these two and these two with this different. And then look, an S and a W, S and a W, and an R different. So what does that mean? If R is the oddball, what, 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 what does that mean? What, 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 what? Yep, it means R is in the middle, middle gene. And then it doesn't matter if we do SW, or if we WRS. Either order is fine. It doesn't matter. All is good. Now you know the middle gene is R. Now we have still two other classes, single crossover events. We need to figure out which numbers go to which crossover, right? Our question here is gonna be, where does the crossover occur? Is the crossover between S and R, or R and W? Which distance are we determining, right? Because remember, recombination frequencies determine distance. So if that's our total end product, what we want, we want map units at the end, okay? And so we need to figure out which class goes with which. So you can see that we have two different SCOs, right? Here's single crossover, here's a single crossover class, Right, ordered, we know the middle numbers have to be the single crossovers because the highest numbers are parental, the lowest numbers are the double crossover, the middle have to be SCO. How do we know? If we're trying to find the distance between S and R, right, S and R, or R and W, R and W, we, and we're, when we're looking for S and R, we need to look at when is S the oddball compared to parental, always compared to parental. Okay, so when is S the oddball compared to parental? Again, here are our parental setups, and we are interested in, right, here's our parental. We're interested in when is S the oddball. So for the single crossovers here, for these, this first set, right, what do we see that's the same? Well, we see W plus, W plus, those two are the same. Oh, <laughs> S is the oddball. R plus, R plus, again, S is the oddball. So if S is oddball here, that means this must be the map distance between S and R. Okay, so those numbers go to that space. And then we check to be sure R and W, when we look at these guys, Really, the W is the oddball, because that's the one we're looking for the crossover. So again, right, there should be something where S with a plus, ooh, S plus, W's the oddball, right, plus R, plus R, W's the oddball. So again, if 
We're looking at W, and he's the oddball. That gives you the numbers for the distance between R and W. Now we want to find map distance. We figured out where all the numbers go. We need to find map distance. Well, how the heck do we do that in a three-point cross? Right? Map distance is recombination frequency. What's recombination frequency? Number of recombinants over total times 100 equals map units. So that's what we need to do now. So the map distance between S and R has to be the recombination numbers, right, the numbers of, of observed offspring over the total for those crossovers. So we said S and R, right, that these numbers here are for S and R, so we have to go 98 plus 92, and what's our total? 1,000. Is there anything else we're missing? We're looking at crossovers here. What are we missing? What do you think? Inconceivable! Yeah, it is. We're missing the double crossovers. When a double crossover happens, it crosses in both places. So we have to count it. It is a crossover event that happens between S and R. So we have to add those numbers here as well. That gives us 0.2, recombination frequency, or 20% after you do times 100, 20 mu. The same goes for the other. Right? Have to add in the double crossovers because it's single crossovers and a double crossover happens there too. This ends up being 0.10 times 100, 10 mu. But we're not done yet. We still have to figure out the distance between S and W. Inconceivable! I know, we're still going. So really, you could add the mu of S plus the mu of W, right? Because S, R, W, what did we say? S to R was 20, R to W was 10. So, you know, if we do the math, this better be 30 mu. Always carry your units. Okay, but let's just check, because what if you screwed up the math on one of those, right? So instead of just getting one wrong, you'll get two wrong. And then if you check this the correct way, you could go back and fix the other one. You'll be able to check your math. So let's do this separately, S and W. That means we have to take all the numbers, all the recombinants, which is all of these. So we need to do all of the single crossovers between S and R, including the doubles, right? Because crossover happened there singly and as a double and also the single crossovers between R and W and their double crossovers because that's another crossover event over here. Again, all over the total. And yes, my friends, 0.30 or 30 MU, and you have done it. Great work, very proud of you. I'm gonna leave you with a little something. Because I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me.